over to the east side. Uh, there's a Phantom 4 drone for sale, and I think I'm gonna buy it. I'll explain in a little bit as to why I'm buying another drone. Oh my holy goodness, I just got the deal of a lifetime on a Phantom 4 drone and a bunch of accessories. <laughs> Finally made it back. Been a lot of driving around today. Um, but the deal of a lifetime on a Phantom 4 drone. Yeah, mine crashed itself. Um, now I say that very specifically because I didn't crash it. I did a video a while back and while I was testing the new firmware, it ran itself into a post and it wouldn't respond to me trying to make it maneuver away from the post. It was fine after that crash, it landed in some shrubberies, but this time it was about 75 feet off the ground and it smashed itself into a lamppost and came tumbling down. It wasn't really, I mean, it's pretty mangled. The camera snapped off and everything. A few weeks ago, we had some really awesome weather here and there's like rainbows and stuff and I was kicking myself. I was like, I want a drone that works. So I ordered a bunch of parts off of eBay to fix it. It's around $450 for all the stuff I needed. Ordered all this stuff. About an hour later, I decided to look on Craigslist. I found this. It is rolling freaking luggage that has a drone inside. Let me show you what we got. Everything in here was $600. And boy, is there a lot of stuff in here. It's heavy, it has wheels. And someone's texting me. We have a Phantom 4 drone with one of the carbon fiber skins on it. We've got the controller uh, and six batteries. There are six batteries in here. Each one of these batteries is easily worth $100 used. And there's six of them. There's my sunglasses. Six of them in here, including the one in the drone. We've also got, wait for it, carbon fiber propellers. <laughs> Um, and there's hardware kits in here to install those carbon fiber propellers. It also came with a range booster for the remote. Hasn't been installed yet, kit's brand new from China. I almost ordered one of those myself, I'm glad I didn't. And it also comes with a wall charger that will simultaneously charge three of these batteries at a time. So, for the price, um, yeah, it's a pretty dang good deal. He said the reason he put this skin on here was to make it easier to see against a white sky. And I have to agree, this thing being white way up in the air is really hard to see. We've also got a carbon fiber gimbal guard here on the bottom. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for this find. I saw it on Craigslist and I thought, is this real? Is there any possible way someone would sell all this stuff for 600 bucks? I mean, just these drones used go for, I don't know, like crashed ones are like 500 bucks maybe. It begs the question. I've got parts on the way for my other one that I spent a bunch of money on. I'm trying to decide if I want to try and return those because the person on eBay that I bought them from accepts returns, but they might charge a 10% restocking fee. And I mean, I don't know. I don't really need two of these drones. I could get the other one working fairly easily and I've already bought all the stuff. Nah, it's a factory 16 gig one. <laughs> we'll have to see if there's any footage on there. I'll probably just fix the other one. Maybe use it for parts as a backup or something, I don't know. The only expensive part on these is the camera. The motors are $12, the top is like $15, propellers are nine bucks. Um, so, I don't know, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Wanna take a look at the old one? See what it looks like? This is the case that mine was in. And this thing, I can just barely lift it. It's big and heavy. Um, it holds two bat- <gasps> I have nine batteries for this thing. Why on earth would I ever need nine batteries for the drone? I totally have nine batteries. Okay, um, as you can see here, this is not exactly in pristine condition anymore. And the camera is now detachable. It's over here. Um, it's pretty trashed. The, uh, let's see. Yeah, the legs are kind of detached. Ooh, the antenna wires are still good though. I just hot glue that back on there, right? Camera snapped off, legs broke. Uh, 
kind of kind of took a little bit of abuse here. I think this motor might still be okay. Oh wait, uh, maybe we'll see. The uh, oh, actually, only two of the quick connects sheared off. These ones are still on here somehow. But anyways, um, that's the old one. The question is, do I fix this one? I mean, I don't need two. Although, the rest of the parts are still in the van. What's gonna be cool though is, I'm gonna have to do a separate video on installing the range booster because you actually take apart the factory remote and install some external BNC connectors so you can attach a booster or directional antennas or things like that to it. Because the antennas that they come with are like permanently attached and you can't remove those. So basically you take the whole thing apart and then instead of having these sticking out there's uh, standard BNC connectors that'll be on there. We're gonna have to play around with all this later though. Uh, in about an hour or so, head over to a friend's place where I've been storing my green van and we're gonna work on getting that thing fixed. So at least it's drivable. I've come up with a plan to remove all the airbags and rear suspension components and put it back to stock. So I should have air conditioning again by later tonight, hopefully. All right, there it is, sitting here in the bushes. I'll be highly surprised if the battery in that thing is not dead. We'll have to, we'll have to see if it actually starts. All right, let's see if we have dome lights or anything. And just for good luck. Nope, it's dead. Our voltage gauge up here is completely off. Hang on. Not the best connections in the world here. Hey, it runs. Sounds like it doesn't have any oil in it, but we're good. <laughs> so, these airbags aren't doing so good. Surprisingly, that's not the leak. It's actually up here. Yeah, see? Bad airbags. We're just gonna take all of this out of here. It's very high likely, but I guess maybe. guess this is our finished ride height. What we're doing is moving the axle there from above the springs to below the springs. Uh, it's obviously going to compress a little bit, but it's definitely going to be raked in the back. <laughs> removed everything in here that's airbag related. We've got the uh, bottom of the axle thing lined up in here now. And uh, just basically need to put some U-bolts on here and we're good to go. What could go wrong? Back out here in storage again. I uh, needed to unload some of the stuff that was in the back of this van. At least I can sit here with the AC running now and cool off a little bit, which is pretty amazing. This van is still 
not in the most pristine condition, but we were able to take apart the uh, airbag suspension that it had on the back and get everything sort of put back to stock. Basically, we just took off all of the airbag suspension stuff and reconnected the leaf springs that it had. And the ride height actually wound up being pretty close to what it was before. There's a couple of issues though. I don't know if you can see down in here, but the leaf springs are very close to this uh, drop floor panel here. It's not quite touching, but it's pretty close. Overall, the uh, procedure went pretty well. That that sort of a the box or that metal plate sort of interferes with the leaf spring a little bit. It's not like a hard bump. It's kind of like a bump stop, but not too bad. What I think I'm gonna do is find some of the air shocks. There are ants on my window. Why are there ants crawling around? There's like flies too, but see, look, there's ants. What does that even happen? Get out of here. Well, this thing has been sitting for a while. I'm sure all sorts of bugs have moved in here. Oh, that reminds me, I need to get a bug bomb and set it off in here. Anyways, what I'm gonna do is get some of those air shocks that I used on the other van. I'm not gonna get the brand that's like, so crazy insane designed for big heavy trucks. They have like a smaller scaled down version of those. And I think we're gonna stick those on the back of this to help alleviate those springs from hitting on that. Um, I don't even know what to call it. It's sort of a metal substructure that was installed when the van was modified. But anyways, I can drive it around now, it's fine. It hits those a little bit and it's kind of bouncy. It's not too bad, but it's drivable. That's the main thing. And it's not blazing hot in here. Now we have some light. I uh, got a couple packages from the mail center. I know one of them has been there for probably a week or more. Uh, pretty sure I know what it is. I think it's this one. Ooh, we've got, um, let's see here. I'm not sure who this is from, but we've got two more Cold Brew Labs coffees. Uh, extra coarse grind, both dark roast. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I'm assuming this is from the same person that uh, sent me the previous stuff. Uh, doesn't say on here. Uh, Amazon gift things come with these little QR code um, gift slips or whatever. And uh, you can scan those with your phone now. All right, scan the QR code. Let's see if it tells me who it's from. Uh, this says it's from a Jeff. Uh, I've got one more here. Hang on, let me just send this note real quick. Thanks for the coffee. You guys are awesome. And send. All right, thank you, note's been sent. Let's check out this other one. And this one, ooh, more coffee. <laughs> We've got Just Coffee Co-op. There's that. Awesome. I'm gonna brew this actually right now. Uh, you guys always have the great timing because I just just ran out of the uh, other stuff that I brewed. Uh, ah, this one's from Michael. Okay, thanks, man. Um, I know you said it was delivered a long time ago. I just finally got over there and got it. But yeah, let's uh, let's give it the sniff test. Oh, you have to cut it open. What is this? This is America. I want pull taps. All right, um, this is going straight into the cold brewer. Tomorrow morning, I will be set. About this guy that decided to kick a dent in my door. I just realized I left the air conditioner running. Yeah, it's not that loud. Um, after a lot of thought and talking to various people, both of my lawyers, even my therapist, and a bunch of others, I think I'm just gonna move on and let karma deal with Carl. I don't really want to deal with any sort of retaliation and the way he behaved with the interaction that he had with the police kind of tells me a little bit about this guy. They had to send up an interagency contact to go to his house because he was in a different city uh, than where I was at the mall where this happened. The cops went and knocked on his door. He basically told them to F off and slam the door in their face. They threatened to break his door down if he didn't open it back up. So this guy kicks a dent in the van. I wasn't around when it happened, but as he was leaving, I happened to come outside and he sees, oh hey, there's a guy in a wheelchair. Um, he just goes ahead and leans into it even harder. 
metaphorically speaking, with his attitude, then it just kind of spirals out of control. His wife thinks it's funny. He's got kids. What are we teaching our kids here? Uh, I think that's what gets me the most, is behaving that way in front of them. I can't really do anything about it. The police told me that charges will be pressed against me if I press charges against him. I've even talked to a couple other police officers in different states and different areas around here as well. They've all said, look, these are two unrelated issues. Yeah, you've got video of him denting your door. That's it. End of story. Should be taken care of. The fact that they want to try and say you can't do anything about it because he's claiming you damaged his vehicle. Um, what actually happened was he hit me with his mirror. I was next to his truck. When he was done talking, he rolled up the window and nailed the gas. I was like this close to it. I ducked to keep from getting hit in the head with his mirror. And as that happened, his mirror hit my elbow and folded it in just a little bit. I don't know what constitutes damage, but to me, that doesn't seem like damage. And also, apparently I stole his gas cap right after he hit me with his mirror as he was driving away. I guess I have super crazy skills of opening gas doors and unscrewing caps that are attached to the truck. It's a Ford. The gas caps are tethered to the truck. I'm just gonna move on with this, I'm done with it. We'll just hope uh, his general douchebaggery gets him in a situation eventually that uh, takes care of the problem. It's, I don't think it's my place to deal with it and I don't wanna deal with retaliation or anything like that. So, we'll just move on, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, we've got a few new Patreons as well. If you are the $3 level and above, and you want to shout out uh, like social media or a link or something like that, I'll send you a message once you sign up and then you can just let me know what you want to do. But for right now, since I don't really have a wall set up here that I can put stuff on, um, I'm just going to put the links in the description uh, down below. So check that out. Uh, there's a few people that have links down there to their social media or some other websites or things they're selling. So yeah, be sure to scroll down, check that out. And I think that's about all for now. I do want to fly the drone, but I don't know if I have time. Well, if you see any footage with it, you'll know I did. <laughs>